Professor von Weizsäcker, in Factor 5, you describe solutions how the world economy could be transformed to a level that is x times, five times more resource efficient. What's the current status? Where are we? It is technically possible indeed. The circular economy of reusing materials is in progress. Energy efficiency can also be increased dramatically. Sometimes I'm asking my students, how many kilowatt hours would you need to lift a bucket of water of 10 kilograms to the top of Mount Everest, which is 8,800 meters? And the phys physicist's answer is one quarter of a kilowatt hour will do, meaning a kilowatt hour is a fabulous powerhouse, but we waste it not end, no end because it doesn't cost a thing. So we need to have a better price, a higher price for the valuable kilowatt hours and technologies adapting to that fantastic potential of becoming five times more efficient. In terms of the hydrogen economy, what is your dream there? Hydrogen is a wonderful fuel, but it doesn't grow on, on trees. It has to be manufactured by splitting the molecule of water into oxygen and, and hydrogen, and then it is delicate and explosive. If oxygen and hydrogen come together and you have a little fire, it explodes. So the handling of hydrogen is a challenge. It can be done. And in hydrogen fuel cells, you have all opportunity of making very powerful motors for motor cars or for the provision of electricity for a, for a whole city um, quarter. You mentioned before the awareness of resources, the awareness of a kilowatt, how much water can we move to Mount Everest. What has to be done education-wise that we get our awareness back, that we have a feeling for resources, whether it's a natural resource, energy, time, friendships, or our most, most precious resource, yeah, the time itself? One educational goal must be to have a correct history of destruction. For instance, of the disappearance of uh, species, of butterflies, of birds, etc. So that people realize we humans are destroying nature. This has to be evidenced and should be part of the curriculum. And then we have to also learn that better technology, more adapted to care for nature and climate than to more fat cons consumption is what universities today should teach their students. Right. What's the role of Greta Thunberg? You have met her, you are friends. Greta Thunberg raised her voice after Sweden was going through a period of dozens of big, big wildfires in their forests. And when then the then 15 years old girl said, this is horrible, and I go on strike, everybody applauded her, said, this girl is right. It must be stopped this way. And in the meantime, millions of students of uh, schools Uh, go for strike on Fridays, Fridays for Future, and try to influence politics and the media. And this, I believe, is brave and fabulous. And what's the role of the media for Greta? Of course, some of the people financing media are on the side of more and more consumption, and they hate her and say, oh, she's an arrogant girl, um, don't listen to her. Listen to us, we are the realists. This is bad. The media have to be robust against such attacks. Right. In your presentation today, 
uh, the question came to the ethics, and you mentioned Pope Francis, his newest encyclica. It's an encyclical of uh, 2015. In the meantime, there are others. But nevertheless, right. Laudato Si is a quote from Holy Francis, which Pope Francis is using to show that our current way of economics, consumption, greed, selfishness, etc., is destroying our common home. This is the vocabulary right. he's using. And we need to really change our mentality, our daily habits, our technology, our politics in a direction that is not destroying our common home for our posterity. And concerning the allocation of resources, of resources and the consumption of resources, you're proposing the, the, the budget policy. What is the role in the future of economically of the of, uh, budgets? For well, I permit myself to briefly explain what the budget proposal has been 10 years ago when it was developed by the German Council for Global Environmental Change. It says, all countries of the world should be given per capita permits of using the atmosphere at an identical level. But the old industrialized countries, including Germany, evidently have already eaten up most of those permits and have very little left. And then they would have to go shopping to developing countries asking for more permits at the price which we have to pay. Yes. And then the economics minister of the respective um, developing country would say, oh, let's stop building coal power plants Let's even idle some of them. Let's accelerate the transition to renewable energies and energy efficiency. And then the permits that become available by our acceleration, right. we sell to the Germans or the British or the Japanese or so, and it makes us richer. Then all of a sudden, the developing countries are on board of global environmental policy, in particular climate. Right. Will the superpowers, China and America, in a short or medium term range, I suppose, support this concept? I suppose that China will be earlier than the US. The US so far has refused any commitment that comes from the international um, the United Nations or so. They make everything voluntary. The good part of the United States is that some states like California or New Jersey or so are starting to do the right thing. Right. And the same is uh, the case for cities. Thank you very much, President von Weizsäcker, for this afternoon for our future, for your wonderful presentation, full of knowledge, wisdom and passion. The workshops are going on and thank you that we could have uh, the interview with you to bring it to a wider audience what happened today here in Fort Wagen. It has been my pleasure. Welcome back, it would be an okay. honor.